What exactly does effeminate mean in a biblical context? To start off, understanding any ancient text often means wading through a bunch of linguistic and cultural mud. The Bible is no exception. The original texts, written in Hebrew and Greek, have gone through countless translations, with each version nuanced by the time period and culture of its translators. The word effeminate shows up in various translations of the Bible, but most notably in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10. The King James Version uses the term to translate the Greek word malakoi, which literally means soft. Now here's where things get tricky. Does soft refer to someone being delicate or having a lack of physical strength? Or does it skew more toward moral weakness or vice? In the context of Paul's writing, some scholars interpret malakoi as referring to men taking on passive sexual roles, which in that society was looked down upon. It wasn't so much about clothing or demeanor in the way we understand gender expression today. It was about behavior that contradicted the rigid gender norms of the time. Fast forward to modern times, this term has often been wielded like a cudgel in cultural and theological debates around masculinity and LGBTQ plus issues. But interpreting these ancient words with such a contemporary and politicized lens almost certainly distorts their original meaning. In the grand narrative of the Bible, the message skews much more toward love, justice, and mercy rather than attire. It talks about clothing oneself in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, Colossians 3.12 which, ironically enough, doesn't sound very masculine by ancient standards. Gender norms and what constitutes masculine or feminine attire have fluctuated wildly over the centuries and cultures. I mean, look at the fops of the 18th century, or the powdered wigs of justices. Portland is a great illustration of how diverse gender expression can be. Walk down any street in this town, and you'll see people presenting themselves in countless ways, unrestricted by traditional binary norms. If you're really looking to understand what the Bible says about gender, humanity, and our shared dignity, focus less on literal 2, 000, year old wardrobe references, and more on the overarching themes of love, acceptance, and kindness. And remember, context is king when it comes to reading ancient texts. And last I checked, no one in Portland, or anywhere else for that matter, is still communicating in Koine Greek.